Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a video diary of everything I've made and altered in the last six months. I've been wanting to make this video for a while for a couple different reasons. Uh, first off, I make and alter a lot of things that I don't show on my YouTube channel, and so I wanted to have a collection of all of that in one place, just so that I and you can see it. Uh, secondly, I again, I want to start this as a series, so every six months I'll come up with a video diary of what I have made and altered in the last six months, because I think that'll just be fun to look back on in the years to come. And third, uh, I have a bad habit of sometimes getting down on myself and thinking that I'm not accomplishing enough, and so I'm making this to remind myself that I do accomplish things and a fair lot of things, and I, I just need to have a little reminder of that sometimes. So, without any further ado, here are the things that I have altered. I got this shirt at a thrift store. It was a men's short sleeve button down shirt. I love the pattern, but in order to have it fit over my hips, I needed to add gussets, so I cut off the sleeves and used the fabric to add room at the hips. I also used that fabric to finish the arm's eye. This shirt I got during a closet cleanout from my college roommate's grandma. It had long sleeves, but I thought it would look better elbow length with a little ruffle. It needed buttons, so I used Mother of Pearl. I love the embroidery detail at the hem. This shirt used to be a dress I got from Target. I wore it the first time my partner came to visit me in Alabama before we were dating. The skirt never fit quite right, so I cut it off, took the ruffle off the bottom, and made it into a wrap peplum top. This shirt I got at a thrift store. I love the print, but the sleeves were a little too small, so I added a gusset under the arm to give myself more room. This vest was made by my grandma. I got her the patchwork squares at a garage sale when I was a kid, and she made this beautiful vest. And last fall, she passed it on to me. The first time I washed it, the lining didn't shrink the same amount as the rest, so I took it apart and got the lining laying flat again. I got this vest at a thrift store. In order for it to fit properly, I extended the slits on the side seams so that it would fit at my waist and sit right on my hips. I also got this skirt at a thrift store. It had a full elastic waistband, and I converted it to flat in the front and elastic in the back. This skirt met the same fate. Full elastic waistband converted to flat in the front and elastic in the back. I used to wear this swing dancing because it twirls so well. It's a little short for my taste now, but I'm keeping it until I make a replacement. This dress is two alterations. A couple years ago, the skirt was attached to a matching bodice, which was too small, so I took it off and attached it to this button front shirt I had. This year, I added sleeve gussets to give myself more room in the sleeves. The top of this dress used to be a flowy crop top from Target that I wore to pick up my partner from the airport in Alabama when he came to visit one time. Crop tops and corsets aren't best paired together, so I tailored the shirt to fit closer to my body and bought enough fabric to make a skirt to make it into a dress, which of course has pockets. The skirt is pretty heavy, and that has stretched the bodice so it no longer sits on my waist, so I'll be fixing that soon. Now that we've seen the things I have altered, let's go to the things I have made. This is my corset mock-up, which I have been wearing almost every day since I built it. It's still incredibly comfortable, and I love the support and shape it gives me. These bloomers are wonderful. I had to make a couple of changes right after I finished them to improve their wear, but they do the job of keeping my chub rub at bay. My petticoat is one of my favorite pieces because putting it on makes me feel more connected to the historical silhouette I desire. It's also just so fun to wear this with my dresses and skirts for the twirl factor. I got this fabric originally to make a pair of pants, but decided to go with this skirt instead. It's an excellent weight, perfect for fall and winter. Also, I added hanging tabs when I was building it so my hangers wouldn't crush the waistband. I'm particularly proud of the pattern manipulation I did on the yoke. And, of course, it has pockets. 
This forest green wool skirt is a piece I have wanted to make since I started my history bounding journey. It will eventually be part of the Norfolk suit that I am working on, but it pairs well with this puffy sleeve blouse. It too has pockets. I got the fabric for this blouse from my supervisor at school. It used to be curtains, and the fabric is from the 1930s or 40s. I just love this top! Look at the cute little flowers! I loved it so much I made another one in this cute lemon print fabric. Fun fact, I made both this shirt and skirt in celebration of getting my second dose of the COVID vaccine. The skirt of this dress is old bedsheets from my partner's mother, and the lace on the neckline and the belt is from her sewing stash. I feel like Maria from The Sound of Music in this dress, which is my ultimate goal. It has a full circle skirt, perfect for twirling, and pockets. I have some minor alterations to do to the bodice to get it lying just right. This plaid dress was my birthday present to myself, and I got to wear it for my birthday outing to Gold Medal Park and the Stone Arch Bridge in Minneapolis. I want to make this dress again in a different plaid and alter the skirt pattern so it has more twirl to it. Eventually, I'll get around to adding pockets and making a matching belt, but I am very pleased with my pattern matching. The tan fabric of this ensemble was a tablecloth from my partner's aunt. I paired it with vintage 1940s eyelet to make a cute spaghetti strap dress and coordinating blouse. And it also has pockets. This belt is the favorite of all of the belts I've made so far. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the things that I have made and altered in the last six months. I know that I had a lot of fun shooting it and going through my closet and being like, all right, I did that and that and that and pulling them all out and trying, playing dress up with my own clothes uh, gave, you know, reinvigorated life into my wardrobe for me. If you liked this video, please come back in December. I'll have another one for you showing what I have made and altered from July to December. I can tell you some of the things that I will be making because they will get individual videos soon. My Norfolk suit series is ongoing. Uh, I'll have the vest and jacket to be shown off in that video. They will also have their own separate build videos. And my corset that I'm finally gonna finish hopefully this summer. Um, and I know I have a couple builds planned just for me to have clothes for the fall and the winter. So those will end up in uh, the collection in December. Also, if you want to see things that I work on not on YouTube, I do occasionally post on my Instagram, which is at elsa.larson.3, uh, and I'll post things that I make, things that I alter there more regularly than I post them here. So if that interests you, go for it. Please like this video to let me know you enjoyed your time here, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video, and leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip-flop.